Hello, in this video I will talk about a higher level interface to multi-threading and multi-processing in Python. And um, yeah, for that we will use the joblib. And joblib is a library that basically abstracts upon um, the, multi, uh, the threading and the multi-processing modules of Python. And um, basically creates a library for jobs, where jobs are just um, an abstract thing that runs code in parallel. Um, yeah, so um, we need two things from our job lib and um, these things are the parallel class and this delayed decorator and the parallel class. Um, this is very similar to the pool that we've seen in the multiprocessing um, module and there we can specify how many processes or, or threads, um, basically how many jobs we want. And then this delayed um, decorator can be used to indicate um, functions that um, yeah should be run um, in a delayed kind of way. So um, not at the time that we actually call this function, but at the time that one of the jobs um, has time to run our code. And also I will show um, this TQDM notebook here. And TQDM um, is just a, yeah, a little neat library that um, creates progress bars and it is very easy to use in Python. And um, yeah, there's a version for Jupyter Notebooks, which you can get from tqdm.notebook. And uh, from that you just import TQDM, um, but you can also just from TQDM import TQDM. And this allows you to, um, yeah, get progress bars in the terminal as well. And it's going to use ASCII um, characters to yeah, create such a progress bar. So yeah, um, first of all, um, a quick example with uh, joblib, how you can uh, parallelize a list comprehension basically. And um, in this list comprehension, we'll call a function. And the function that we call um, is decorated using this delayed uh, decorator and um, in this case we just have a square function this takes one argument then it prints uh, squaring this number and returns the square of this number so um, yeah how do we run this in parallel we create a parallel object um, just calling the parallel constructor and uh, we have to specify how many jobs we want and we do this using the end jobs um, parameter and for this example I just set this to 3 and uh, yeah by default uh, this joblib parallel object will use the lowkey backend and lowkey um, is just an implementation of multiprocessing in Python um, yeah it's very similar to, multi to the actual multiprocessing module but just a different implementation of that and uh, it runs a little bit more stable than the multiprocessing module, but multiprocessing is native to Python, whereas uh, Loki is an external library. So um, yeah, uh, by default it uses the more stable Loki one, but you can also set this to multiprocessing, um, and you can also set this to the threading backend, um, which is just the threading module, which then uses threads instead of processes. Okay. Then continue with the um, the parallel uh, list comprehension here. We first created this parallel object and then we call this. So we have parentheses after this object here. We call this and as an argument, uh, we specify basically a generator for our um, list comprehension. So as you've seen um, in one of the earlier videos, um, uh, in one of the earlier weeks that we can create these um, generators very similar as um, as a list comprehension but we just um, can pass this generator to some function call and in this case it's not really a function call but an object call um, this parallel object implements the call function and uh, yeah this just takes uh, such a generator which then calls the function that we've decorated with delayed and we just pass the value um, that we want to um, yeah, 
consider in this uh, loop, in this list comprehension. And um, additionally, you can see here that we call TQDM um, and we pass this range. So usually um, this would be the for loop and um, this would run. But then in order to create this progress bar, we will just add at this TQDM call around the thing that we want to iterate over. And this will already give us the progress bar. So when I run this, you can see this uh, went really quick because we're just squaring 10, 10 numbers here. Um, so yeah, you can see the result here. So this parallel call returns a list of result values, which are the return values of the square, fun the square function in correct order. And um, yeah, we can also see the progress bar here, which finished really quickly. Um, okay, so now let's go over to a more um, complicated example. And here we want to compute eigenvalues of a matrix again. And um, here we have basically two times the same function, but one of them has this delayed um, decorator. And this is just um, so that we can compare the multiprocessing module, which yeah can't use the uh, the decorator and we'll use this function here and we um yeah can also have a look at joblib uh, which will then use this function right here and uh, we will again use this nums variable that we've used earlier so this is just uh, these 1000 matrices um, for which we would then want to create uh, yeah compute the eigenvalues okay so let's first of all see um how fast the multiprocessing module is. And this is just creating a pool as you've seen before and uh, calling this map function and uh, mapping the eigenvalues function onto this nums um, array. And then we'll measure the time um, to see how long this takes. Okay, and this should be done soon, I guess. Um, so it's yeah, computing the eigenvalues of 100 by 100 matrices 1000 times uh, for different matrices um, so yeah this actually takes a while but um, I hope it finishes soon otherwise I will just have to continue talking I guess um, yeah I don't remember this taking so long I don't know um, yeah, why it's still running. Let's see, will you finish? Okay, I've just restarted the kernel and um, it just worked. So I just tried it out and it worked. Um, before it didn't and it didn't do anything. I'm really confused why it just didn't work. Um, but yeah, let's try this again. Um, if we execute this, it should now um, compute the eigenvalues. And yep, now it worked for some reason. Um, sometimes restarting the kernel will do magic. Um, so yeah, this took 5.34 seconds uh, using the multiprocessing module. And now let's see what joblib can do. And um, this will use the Loki backend um, but it will not only use the Loki backend, but it will also do some more um, yeah, optimization in the background. So Joblib doesn't only do multiprocessing um, or multithreading, but it also efficiently copies memory and makes sure that the memory will reach the new process in a very efficient manner. And therefore it also has some more functionalities that you can use without this parallelization. Um, so there's also a memory class that you can use, um, but I will not talk about this in this video um, or in this lecture. Um, yeah, but just know that um, Joblib does more optimization than just running in parallel or just using uh, multiprocessing. So there's more to it. But um, yeah, let's see how fast um, it can do this. And yeah, this just took 1.95 seconds. So you can see that this still was a huge improvement from the normal multiprocessing module. And um, this is one of the reasons that um, the joblib is 
so great. It's very easy. You just have this one line, um, which is basically a parallel list comprehension. And this is able to run uh, code very, very quickly. And um, yeah, this is, uh, this is very useful in lots of applications. Um, whenever you're processing data, for example, and you can parallelize something, Joblib makes this really easy. And it's very easy to just um, yeah, run some processing in general uh, in, in parallel or even um, doing like loading multiple files in parallel. This will also be faster. Um, so yeah, there are lots of applications for this and it's very easy to use. Um, okay, yeah, but as I said, you can also specify the backend that is used in this parallel pool, basically. And by default, this is low key. We can also set this to threading. So we just specify this parameter backend and set it to threading. And um, yeah, the rest just stays the same. And now we've done um, multi-threading instead of multi-processing. And as you can see, this already runs a lot slower. Um, so yeah, you can see here that the Loki backend uh, was running at around 661 iterations per second. The multi-threading is just at 62 iterations per second. So this is um, like an order of magnitude slower than the multiprocessing. And this is really the power of multiprocessing that you can run multiple things in parallel and um, that it gets really efficient as soon as you have um, like high, highly CPU intensive computations. Um, and as you might have noticed, um, I've set the number of jobs here to minus one in the last calls and minus one just says um, take the number of CPU cores. Um, so the maximum number that makes sense basically just as leaving um, the the processes parameter in the pool uh, as default, you can specify number of jobs equal minus one and minus one. And um, yeah, this will just uh, take the default um, number of cores in your CPU.